My name is Noah Stricker and I am an ornithologist working right now with One Ocean Expeditions on expeditions to Antarctica. So my specialty is Antarctic birds and other polar birds. I've been studying birds since I was about 12 years old. <laughs> so some people call me a birder, some people call me a bird nerd. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to talk with you today about penguins. There are three main penguins on the Antarctic Peninsula. You have the chinstrap penguin, you have the gentoo penguin, and you have the Adelie penguin. Of those three, probably the gentoo is most common. You see them at most penguin colonies. The Adelie is the least common. We only saw those maybe two or three days this trip in very small numbers. And then the chinstrap penguin is in the middle. They don't occupy their breeding colonies year-round. So the penguins on the Antarctic Peninsula come back to these places probably sometime during October. They come back to the same nest they were in the year before, or if they're a very young bird, they come back and start a new nest near the area where they were hatched as a chick. And, uh, and then they probably lay their first egg sometime in late October, early November, and right now, late December, mid to late December, is when we start seeing the first chicks. Mid to late December, and I was interested to see yesterday at Yankee Harbor, did you see the Gen 2 penguin chicks? There were some fairly good sized ones there, and that means that that colony, which is just a little bit farther north than the other ones we visited, is a little farther ahead. Probably takes a good month, month and a half. Well, penguins build, these three kinds of penguins build their nest out of loose stones. So they will gather sometimes even a couple thousand individual rocks. And what they do is they scrape a little depression out of the ground and then they line it with these loose rocks and it makes a cup shape. And that cup helps hold their eggs in place so that they don't roll away. It helps keep the eggs a little bit higher than ground level, so if there's like snow melt and water coming in, they don't get flooded. And it gives them a place to sit on top of the eggs. And while they're sitting on the eggs, the eggs are fairly well protected from predators. So things like skuas can't really get an egg away from an adult penguin, unless the penguin is not paying attention. So sometimes the skuas will come in and one will distract the penguin, and then the other one will come in from behind. <laughs> Hunt for the eggs? Eh, not really. Skuas, brown skuas and south polar skuas we have here on the Antarctic Peninsula, they're, they're the main predators of eggs and penguin chicks. Um, there are some other birds like uh, sheath bills and kelp gulls and giant petrels that would scavenge an egg if they got the chance if it was just sitting out in the open, but they usually can't steal one from a penguin. It's kind of interesting. about. 90% of penguins don't make it through the first year of their life. And then they'll go out to sea, and they're pretty much on their own for the first couple of years. They don't come back to the nesting colony during the summer. And maybe they're three or four years old when they lay their first eggs and have their first nest by themselves. And then they can live maybe 12 to 20 years if they live into old age. <laughs> 